Hi, my name is Christian Hyde. I'm the Managing Director at Risk360, and I help oversee the ISO 27001 practice. And this is the ISO 27001 Explained series, where we cover all 114 controls of the ISO 27001 framework and try to provide some insight into those controls. So today we're covering uh, Control Objective 8.2, uh, that is a subset of asset management that's around information classification. So the information classification control objective only has three controls. Um, but there's some nuance to those and how you want to apply those. On my screen today, on the left-hand side here, I have the ISO 27001 framework. And then on the right-hand side, I have the ISO 27002 framework, which is the detailed implementation guidance of ISO 27001. So let's cover each of these three controls. The first control is 8.2.1 around classification of information. And what that basically requires is that for all of your assets and for all of your information, you've come up with a classification scheme. And sometimes that looks like uh, confidential, internal, or public. You know, you might have various classification schemes. You'd also want to define that via policy. What is your information classification scheme and how do you apply that? Here in just a second, I'm going to show you an example policy of what that could look like so you can think about implementing that for yourself. The second control, 8.2.2, is around labeling information. So once you've developed an information classification scheme, how do you label uh, each piece of information so that people are clear about what classification scheme it falls under? And that might not mean like literally putting a label on it, but maybe that means uh, structuring your access controls around classification or making it clear that something's highly confidential versus something that's public. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second as well. The third control, uh, 8.2.3, is on handling of assets. So based on its classification and its label, what is the appropriate use of handling that asset? So for example, if it's a public slide deck, you can put that on the internet, but if it's confidential data, maybe that can only live in certain zones of the organization or only be shared with certain individuals based on that. So that's the gist of the information classification control objective, but I wanna hop into a policy so you can see what that could look like for your organization. So here on the screen is an example information security policy that Risk360 provides to all of our clients. Uh, if you're a Risk360 client, you have access to this, but we also work with our clients to help strategize about what this should look like from a customized approach perspective and um, also implement those controls. So. Uh, for the first control around information classification, here's an example of uh, a classification scheme. So one of the most popular is to have uh, three classification schemes. Restricted data that's the most private, confidential data that maybe is confidential internally, and everyone internal to the organization can see that but wouldn't be shared external. And then public data such as marketing documents or the public-facing website that really anybody can see internal or external to the organization. Restricted data might be like uh, secret formulas or uh, personal health data or something the company gathers. Confidential data might be, uh, you know, workflows and methodologies that are good for anyone in the organization, but you wouldn't want that getting outside the organization and public data, for example, the website. So you want to define those. Um, I've seen organizations with between three and five levels of classification. If you're like a government entity and you have like DOD level um Classified, classified data, you might go into a little more detail here, but this is a good example of what that policy could look like. Um, then you think about lab, uh, labeling data. So, um, for example, in this policy, we've put in the footer that this is a confidential document. So it's okay to be shared with anyone internal to the organization, but it's not necessarily a public document. Um, so labeling could, like I said earlier, be as simple as footers in documents where you label that document. You might set up zones for access control where like a human resource data is stored in one place, client customer data is stored in another. So there's going to be some hybrid of labeling the data in the document itself or labeling it based on zones. So in everyone's understanding when they're accessing certain types of data, what the expectations are. Then you get into handling of assets, and this is where uh, you really want to lay out your expectations for what is the appropriate handling of an asset based on its class. So a really common example is in healthcare organizations when you're dealing with patient data, you know, that data has to be handled with utmost care. If you can't share it outside the organization, sometimes you can't even email that data, sometimes you can't write it down. Uh, if you're thinking about financial data, for example, with PCI, sometimes you can't even uh, take credit cards over the phone because uh, that's prohibited. So you really want to think about your organization, the types of data that you 
um, care about, especially your highest risk data, and lay out expectations for how that data would be gathered, who might come in contact with it, and what the appropriate handling of that asset is based on the type of data. You also want to think about that for physical devices. So you might have an appropriate use policy for your endpoints or your laptops. Um, you might have the same type of thing when it comes to downloading software. So if someone has a software or an application asset, what is the appropriate use of that and the scope and boundaries and limitations for use? Um, and then the last thing to think about is uh, really dive into controls around restricted data because those are what we call your crown jewels. So if you have secret formulas, uh, health data, etc., cetera, um, do you want that data encrypted? What's the physical security parameters around it? Are you allowed to email it? Can you store it on external hard drives? So really think about that strategy and define it in policy and train employees on it so they have a sense for how they're supposed to use that data. So that is uh, handling of assets uh, uh, in a nutshell. If you guys would like more information on this, you can continue the video series. Where we'll walk through all the controls in ISO 27001. You can also visit our website at risk360.com to get more information. So thank you for watching.